cities were built from calcite. To give you a few examples, Jerusalem is one of those cities that was built out of calcite. And another form of calcite, which is called limestone, what if one stone could split your vision in two and build entire civilizations? Other examples are Malta. I don't know if any of you have ever been to Malta, but Malta is a city that is uniform in color only because they build it out of limestone. And in America, you would go to a place like Friedrichsburg, which is a very good example of a city built out of limestone. It's the pyramids, that's when it becomes really interesting because those big, big blocks of the pyramids were carved out of limestone. Why did they use limestone? Because limestone is a soft stone that can easily be shaped. Paris, France is another example. What makes Paris, France interesting is that you have the quarries which actually turned into the catacombs. All of that stone that came out of there or build up Paris, France. So I'm not exaggerating if I'm saying that whole cities were built out of calcite. Then we've got places like Bath in England. Bath was built out of limestone. Then we've got Athens, Greece. Everybody knows about the Parthenon. A lot of these ancient temples are being destroyed before our very eyes because of pollution. Then we've got Petra temples and buildings that were actually carved into the limestone. How was the cliffs of Dover formed, the white cliffs of Dover? Cliffs of Dover are white because they are made primarily of chalk, which is a soft white limestone composed mainly of microscopic remains of marine plankton called coccolithopores. These organisms accumulate on the seabed about 70 to 100 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. Over millions of years, the layers of chalk were compressed and uplifted to form cliffs. The whiteness comes from the purity of the calcium carbonate, which reflects light and gives the cliff their bright white appearance. So what is the human connection now? with calcite, except for the fact that we are building these huge monuments and uh, these uh, structures out of calcite. Calcite is also used extensively in agriculture. When soil has been found to be too acidic, you have to add calcite to it. The most common form of alkaline material that they add to soil is lime. Now lime is just calcite. It's calcite that has been powdered up to a certain micron and then it is strewn across the field and that brings down the acidic level of the soil. The story of calcite doesn't stop here. When we were mining calcite in Zambia, we were looking for the really, really clear pieces, something like this. Can you see my finger behind that? So we were looking for larger pieces than this. Um, we really wanted larger pieces because if you can find a piece that is 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and clear they will pay us ten thousand dollars per kg and so we were crazy we went right into the soil into that mine and we were pulling out tons and tons of calcite to try and get clear pieces like this one but alas our calcite had small air bubbles inside and wasn't suitable for selling as optical calcite because what they do is they cut it at a certain angle and turn it 180 degrees and then they make prisms out of it that uh, is used in optical instruments. Even in huge telescopes, a big piece of calcite can be used to look through the ozone layer at stars. Isn't that fascinating? So uh, making lenses out of it, don't think of traditional lenses like this. 
but think of optical lenses. So one way that calcite is formed is through coral. And the other way that it is formed, it's formed through shells of sea creatures on the ocean floor. And it's built up over time and then compressed again. And you will find limestone inside uh, seabeds or you will find uh, coral reefs forming. The other way that calcite is formed is through limestone forming inside cave. Water, like groundwater from rain, drips through existing rock that contains calcite. And then as it drips through the existing rock, it then collects calcium carbonate inside that rainwater. And as it drips down, it then starts forming stalactites on the top. And then as it drips on the bottom of the floor of the cave, Inside the earth, uh, calcite is being formed as we speak through the building up of stalagmites and stalactites. And when the two meet, you would have a pillar. It takes a thousand years for 10 centimeters of stalactite to be formed. So you can just imagine when you look at these caves that I have on the photos now, how many millions of years it took to build up these calcite columns. They build up such a vast structure that it is being mined specifically for building stone. How do you distinguish a calcite from another stone? Let me show you. If you take this piece of calcite and you put hydrochloric acid on top of it and it fizzes, then you know you've got calcite. Cal a calcite has a specific form. When you chip this crystal, it would always form into a rhombic form. It always break upon certain cleavage planes. And these were definite cleavage planes. So you could split it into thin, thin slices, but it would always have the same shape, always going smaller and smaller, like we are demonstrating over here. At the end of this video, I'm showing you different types of calcites that have been collected by collectors. And calcite is a very, very popular mineral to collect because it has a, about 26 different forms that it forms. And it has so many different colors. I end up with this quote. From mountain to monument, reef to rock shop, calcite is more than just a crystal. It's the foundation of life and civilization. Thank you for looking. Thank you for watching. Right, huh? Thank you for watching. No, <laughs> no, for thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Okay, let's take this away. All right. Mm -hmm.